Hey everybody, welcome to this year's Summer Knowledge Grab Technology Showcase, where I walk through some of the cool services and tools out there in the Knowledge Graph space. I go through these with an honest review so that you can see what these are all about without necessarily having to go and talk to those salespeople unless you really want to. All right, so the lineup for this year is really exciting. This is the graph technology we're talking about today. And make sure you stick around for this month's showcase because there are a lot of other cool tools that we will be reviewing. So with that said, let's go get started. This is Wei Gu from Shanghai. Can you tell us a little bit about what what is so special about Nebula Graph? Yep. So uh, one of one of the major uh, character for Nebula Graph is the open source, and the other one we we when we introduce Nebula Graph, we are already also um, we always will introduce this as a distributed uh, graph database. Mm -hmm. So regarding the uh, open source, so uh, it's it's backed by a power team that's within love of the open source community. So nice. And our community is, is relative um, healthy and active and it it already had uh, involved us uh, by so many power users and contributors mm -hmm. from different teams and in industries. And the other side is distributed. So Navigraph was born to be distributed and uh, it's designed in day zero to handle uh, the massive uh, scale uh, traffic mm -hmm. in OLTP with hundreds of billions of nodes and nice. thousands of billions of relationships. So mm -hmm. that's uh, so when the uh, the QPS rises, the data scales up. So uh, Nebula will stands out, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's most of Nebula graph. Well, that's exciting to hear though too, because it it sounds like it's really a project of passion as well from the community that you have a lot of folks that are working on this to make it, you know, as good as it can be. So can you maybe tell me a little bit like what made the community come together to start a project like Nebula Graph? I think the founder teams of uh, Nebula Graph uh, or it, or was originated from the Facebook. They have their uh, experience on making the graph infrastructure uh, dealing with social network and mm -hmm. the fintech uh, fraud detection, etc. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they decided to uh, make their uh, own um, open source projects. So, you know, let's let's see what this looks like. If you don't mind showing us, we we are in in a, a graph, a, a property graph rather than a tree pool. Mm -hmm. And uh, I assume uh, our audience are familiar with the difference of the two. So, but mm -hmm. something is still uh, unique, even when it comes to the property, uh, the graph, uh, property graph. Yeah. So um, one other thing is Nebula graph is uh, designed to be a uh, schema fold. So rather than the schema last pattern. Yeah. So and it's because we were designed for scale and uh, that's the trade-off ultimate yep. that we can see exactly. on the balance. So. Mm -hmm. But one of the interesting thing I want to highlight here is in uh, in our edge or relationship uh, design in a schema, Yeah, uh, we actually have a folder pool. Uh, so you, oh. you, it's straightforward that in one uh, instance of, of lag or uh, edge, you have the source vertex ID, the destination mm -hmm. vertex ID, you have the edge type, which is uh, not novel, but we have the fourth one. Uh, we call it a rank, but uh, it is not limited to a rank thing. Actually, uh, this certain field is helping us to identify uh, a certain instance of a, a, a relationship between the two. So you can have, uh, ideally, you can have multiple in instances uh -huh. between, mm -hmm. yeah. So you don't have to introduce yet another uh, nodes between them yep. to enable this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's something interesting. Yeah, that is yeah. interesting. And so you can you can have multiple relations and yeah. weights and other pieces of information on on those vertices, basically on this, and maybe the rank will help you with your querying of the graph with that kind of construction. Correct. Yes, it, exactly. And that's related to our backend. So mm -hmm. our team initially to bring this to the fintech, the, the risk control in the financial thing. Mm -hmm. So in, in the left side of the screen uh, is some of the uh, NGQL queries that you can mm -hmm. see. Um, we were using very um, 
straightforward. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, this is really human readable. (laughs) So it makes it easier for people to learn. Exactly. And actually, this this is almost uh, most of the basic uh, keywords of the old NGQL. And you can express express most of your graph patterns. And uh, if you notice here that we can combine this pipeline so you can describe the multiple complex uh, query with this uh, some kind of Unix, uh, mm-hmm. you know, philosophy uh, mm-hmm. pipeline. So mm-hmm. we really love this and our users do that too. And, but uh, frankly, there are certain uh, patterns that is still um, not straightforward to express uh, only in NGQL. And that's mm-hmm. why we... we we try to bring the mature, uh, the polished, the defined uh, open cipher. So mm-hmm. I think you may be quite familiar with. Very, with yeah. And we all know that we also have the uh, ISO, the 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 GKL standard. Mm-hmm. And actually, our team is working on to um, be um, great. Invest on this standard. Oh, thank goodness! Yep. I can't wait until we all are aligned with GQL because it will make uh a lot of things a lot easier <laughs> and most importantly the the, the power of the community mm-hmm. so Nep- nebula is relatively um quite uh rich in 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 its ecosystem yeah wow so from this yeah this so is a lot of connectors our... i mean that's pretty cool to see so many of them <laughs> yeah exactly so in Many of them were uh, brought by our community users mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can see the red one is our core. Mm-hmm. So you ha- we have a bunch of different observation, uh, monitoring, deployment, the cloud native related uh, open source projects and mm-hmm. the data uh, visualization. And uh, you can uh, ops in a visualized way. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to the graph uh, algorithm, uh, the graph computation, they are uh, nice. some of the uh, great utilities. Yep. And uh, you have, we have a bunch of different ETL connector. You can uh, connect different data sources, uh, either it's in batch or in different server or mm-hmm. in a streaming way, a bunch of different connectors uh, and the uh, ops and that we are connecting to Elasticsearch. So one of the visualization uh, project is, is called uh, uh, Nebula Graph Studio. And that's the very first uh, visualization tour uh, that we mm-hmm. bring to the community. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can do the schema creating the data import visually. And uh, of course you can queries, make queries and explore your, uh, your graph data in, in this way. Mm-hmm. And it's open source. The second one is called uh, Explorer. So I, mm-hmm. before I bring the, what it's like, I, I'm bring a real world cipher query here. Yeah, it's yeah, coming good. from one of my, my projects <laughs> and it looks a little bit mass, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So how, uh, how we would like to, would like to uh, help here. So mm-hmm. uh, one of the answer here is we, we bring a, a feature named the uh, visual query that mm-hmm. y- it can help you to t- generate um, the queries oh, in a visual cool. way. I like that. That's yeah. a good learning so tool So you can too. see. Yeah. Exactly. And it's quite straightforward for even for the uh, mm-hmm. newcomers. Mm-hmm. So you can drag all your... Uh, labels or tags or oh, vertex so it's a cool. type of vertex here yeah and, and you like can drag this. and connect them yeah so you can connect like you can connect this uh here and uh, select the different range and then you can generate the cipher uh patterns and mm-hmm. you can query of course you can query them here and uh one of the other uh, unique thing of the uh, Nebula's uh, virtualization is uh, you can have the 3D module. And for example, if you click the bird view of the graph, so you can oh, well, have everything cool. uh, rendered in 3D. It's a quite early phase that we have yeah. them uh, render. Lately, I see we can render them more awesome. And the, finally, I want to demo your, uh, uh, this is the, our uh, dashboard. So. We already mm-hmm. provide the open source um, utility that you can connect everything and bring your make your own uh, observability mm-hmm. uh, utilities. Mm-hmm. But we also bring a single one tour 
you can use it out of box so you can make the um monitoring in one place so mm -hmm. it's called a dashboard so uh i'm not going to give you a video demo but you can try it i, I will show you later uh one i'm the, the toy project i'm making too so you can play it right. on your own machine in one line so uh, dashboard is one of them you can just one so does this two. dashboard the way that it looks does is this what the dashboard looks like out of the box or are you allowing with the nebula nebula dashboard for for end users to create dashboards that look like this or however they want it to look oh uh actually uh we already have a bunch of different uh, utilities mm -hmm. so you can create your dashboard like this mm -hmm. but uh, this dashboard is just uh, look like so when you boot bootstrap it it's mm -hmm. uh, out of box like this yeah Nice. It's nice yeah. that you 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 are allowing that flexibility, which again makes perfect sense since you have a large community of of developers doing certain things. Um, but then you, you know you have some of the things out of the box, so that if you don't know how to develop some of this stuff yourself, you can still play around with it, which is pretty nice. Dashboard itself is powered by a lot of other uh, cloud related uh, like Prometheus, Grafana, mm -hmm. Exporter, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And we have uh, many other uh, cloud native things. Wow. And the one thing to highlight is uh, in the cloud native landscape. So um, Nebograph is one of them in the database category here. So mm -hmm. you can like mm -hmm. click. So this is our repo. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, this is our repo. And uh, one thing to highlight here, so uh, we we are cloud native and we were we provided the, the enterprise offering enterprise uh, support and enterprise version mm -hmm. uh, for a couple of years. And from this year, we decided to uh, provide a managed service and we started from the Microsoft Azure. So you can actually search graph database in the marketplace. Then uh, finally, I want to give some uh, introduction on the ETL, the connector mm -hmm. thing. So we have a bunch of different toolings uh, when it comes to data injection. So we have something called an importer. So it's a Go binary. So you can ad hoc easily uh, doing uh, import thing from the CSV thought of mm -hmm. on that, mm -hmm. which is most of the case yeah and we also have a more heavier uh, uh you, you know more formal uh a tour called nebula exchange mm -hmm. and actually um if you if you have only like billions of data mm -hmm. import is enough so nebula is quite uh, uh you know optima in performance when yeah. you are injecting uh, data but uh, when you can ha have a, a different sources of data, we, we choose to put our uh, connector in, in the Spark. So Exchange is actually a Spark application. Yeah. So most of the uh, people in this uh, data domain, we have the competence and data infra in the Spark. And in, in the Exchange, we, we support a bunch of different sources from mm -hmm. the Kafka, Pulsar, Postgres, Mm -hmm. uh, Clickhouse, we didn't list everything here, but you can explore yourself. It's yeah. also open source and you can do them. Uh, and so this is actually from the reader perspective of mm -hmm. the exchange. Mm -hmm. On the right side, we, we also have another option called uh, file based writer. So instead of, uh, you know, making the queries or the writing queries uh, from the Spark, so you mm -hmm. can leverage the cluster to work them in super uh, high throughput. But in case you have some uh, use case like, like WeChat with one of our users. So it's like Chinese words and WhatsApp. So they have mm -hmm. a huge graph in the social network. Mm -hmm. So they want, they didn't do it uh, in a streaming uh, way. They Instead they do it in a T plus one. So every day they want to ingest uh, hundreds of billions of yeah, uh, wow. uh, vertex and the relationship every day. Mm -hmm. So they, they help us bring this uh, capabilities of SST. So Nebula Graph and the line is leveraging a KV storage. Uh, it's uh, brought by uh, Facebook. It's called RocksDB. So mm -hmm. in KV storage, we have the capabilities to generate uh, SST files. It's the underlying uh, file format. Mm -hmm. So the benefit here is in, in exchange, you can, you know, 
uh, data in analyze uh, in Nebula is sorted, so you you can have it queried in a uh, relatively uh, fast fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, sorting it when you're writing it, sorting it uh, is kind of costly, relatively yeah. costly. But you can pro uh, make it even uh, better, so you can leverage your uh, your large Spark. Uh, cluster infrastructure mm -hmm. and make everything sorted outside of the cluster in, yep. inside the yeah so you can with the cloud you can ad hoc bring a huge spark connector when yep. needed and uh, make everything generated in the SSC files and sideload your data in Nabla Graph so you bring a next level injection uh, throughput in this way. Yeah. And I think that there's, and, there's, you know, probably only a certain amount of people that are going to have that amount of data and maybe even have ha yeah. ad hoc um, situations where they have to bring in that amount of data as well. But what I like about this is, you know, you were talking about, you know, that distributed network, right? Like that's a big mm -hmm. part of why Nebula Graph is, is what it is. And a lot of this goes hand in hand with that, where you're, you're trying to make sure that, you know, if you're going, you know, full out and you have multiple billions of pieces of information coming in, that it's not, yeah. um, you know, the, the cost, I think, is one of the biggest pieces to this. I mean, there's an efficiency piece, too, but the cost, like yeah. bringing that amount of data in, even as an ad hoc and trying to process all of it like a normal database Oh boy, that'd be very expensive. So it's good that you have some exactly. of these options to help people out with that. This is an application called Amanson. So it's an open source project uh, originated brought by Lyft and uh, it's in Linux Foundation. Mm -hmm. So it's a service that help you addressing the pain point in your data discovery, mm -hmm. your metadata governance, your data lineage. So you can see here, so it's the architecture view. Uh, mm -hmm. In your data lab, you have a bunch of different data sources, your pipeline, your uh, data warehouse. Mm -hmm. You want to manage the schema, the, the metadata of them. So uh, Amazon help you uh, extract data. They have a pre pretty beautiful abstraction to help you define yeah, your that's nice. ingestion. That's helpful. Yeah. And, and they did, uh, in their design, they choose to use a graph database as their single source of choose. So uh, imagine this is Nebula graph. You can have mm -hmm. everything here. And they have this uh, beautiful design API and front end service to mm -hmm. um, explore the metadata and manage, the manip manipulate the whole picture of the metadata. So you don't have to ping everyone in the Slack <laughs> channel. So, hey, can I change this table? Can I use this <laughs> raw data? Yeah, this Let's is the beauty of graph, right? <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. So I want to show you a, a brief uh, introduction on how it looks like to solve a real, real world problem. So Great. this is a demo of the Nebula graph, uh, uh, of a mess on top of Nebula graph. So you, uh, so you can see that uh, um, in this here, you can search your table. So oh, this is one of table and uh, you can favorite it and uh, you can serve everything inside. You have the metadata that's uh, related to our daily communication. So you don't have to ping people mm -hmm. and uh, you can manipulate it, of course, and you can check the column information and this is actually managed. And you can also query, uh, yeah, it's tagged here. So this is a downstream. For example, this table was actually gener uh, actually generated another view in, in the same table in the Hive. And this is a dynamo table. You can uh, generate a table too from that. So it's actually uh, in the lineage perspective, it's downstream. And you can see another table, but one click, and uh, it has some upstream too. So it's, this is the data lineage view. So mm. it, yeah, it's the beauty uh, of the graph itself. Mm -hmm. So underlying is powered by a graph database. So uh, if you br actually, if some of your uh, uh, your pattern, your, your uh, scenario fits mm -hmm. in the graph, so you can connect graph to your service in API. But uh, in in parallel, you have ability of the visualization by nature bring from the graph database. Most of the graph disk have this capability out of the box. So for example, a Manson. So with Nebula uh, being powered as a backend storage, 
you you don't you are not limited to your uh, Amazon design or uh, Amazon uh, GUI or API. Mm -hmm. So if you provide your uh, graph console to your user, maybe in uh, read only uh, mm -hmm. permission, mm -hmm. they can explore all yeah. of those data lineage just by clicking in, in your studio. So, so this is mainly a, uh, a data governance use case. So I just want to make sure that people exactly. caught that. So this is pretty cool. So basically what you're saying here, if I could summarize, is you are using this, this cool, you know, back end to help folks understand where their data is coming from and where it goes so that you can you know, essentially track down where all that that information is going uh, from a data governance perspective. But I also think that that same kind of pattern helps with fraud detection. Where did the data come from? Where did it go? All of that, you know, that those are very common use cases for graph and seeing it um, in these open source tools, I think is pretty, pretty fun because it hopefully helps people learn more about graph since you can just go in and play with this as your heart desires. Because I mean, you just showed us where that repo was like we could go and play around with it if we wanted to exactly and uh, you know in uh, in most of the other patterns in, in in database so they don't by nature have the capability to you know follow your institute uh, institute you, you just click and you don't have to learn any query languages or something like that. You right. can query the insight, just follow your mind. I, I want to highlight this in case some of our audience want to try out Never Graph. Yeah. So you can check our repo and uh, we have a pre ground online. But if you want to get your hands more dirty, you can check out the Nebula app. <laughs> yeah, you can have everything um, uh, that I mentioned or some of them I didn't introduce. You can have everything just in single line. Cool. Uh, like, uh, yeah, you can have this single line and in your, on your Linux machine, everything will be up and running and playable.